Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the portal vein. The portal vein is a large vein which collects blood from the abdominal part of the gastrointestinal system, from the pancreas, from the spleen, from the gallbladder, and the blood is going to the hepatic sinusoids. From there, it will go back to the inferior vena cava through the hepatic vein. Okay, so the portal vein is a large vein. which collects blood blood from the abdominal part of the part of the gastrointestinal system gastrointestinal system from the pancreas spleen and gallbladder so we got the blood that is coming out coming through the portal vein to the liver and it collect blood from this part of the body okay now we go it is called portal vein because we have two sets of capillaries okay it's called portal vein okay we have two two sets of capillaries two sets of capillaries okay one set is in the wall of the intestine another set is in the liver the hepatic sinusoids okay we got that's what is called the portal vein Now we go the site of formation. Site of formation of the portal vein. It is formed. It is formed by the union of of the superior mesenteric vein superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein okay at the neck of the pancreas at the neck of the pancreas actually behind the neck of the pancreas you can say behind the neck of the pancreas and the level of lumbar vertebra 2 lumbar vertebra Two. Okay, or second number vertebra, the level of L2, the level of L2. We got the formation of the site of formation is behind the neck of the pancreas by the union of the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein. Vertebral level, lumbar vertebra, two, L2 level. We got the formation of the of the portal vein, its vertebral level. Okay. 
so if you look at the in look at the figure okay this is the head of the pancreas the neck of the pancreas body of the pancreas so this is the head this is the neck area neck of the pancreas okay this is the head of the pancreas head of pancreas okay pancreas and the site of formation of the portal vein here by the union of splenic vein this is the splenic vein and this is the superior mesenteric vein superior mesenteric mesenteric vein here they unite here and there is formation of portal vein so this is the portal vein portal vein and portal vein has two division two branches on the right port right branch this is the right branch of the portal vein this is the left branch of the portal vein left branch okay we got left branch right branch this is the duodenum first part second part of duodenum third part of duodenum here okay this part is the fourth part of duodenum okay that is the duodenum duodenum okay we got the formation of the portal vein okay now go to the course of the of the portal vein course okay the portal vein runs along the right free margin of the lesser omentum okay and it is turning towards right a bit right direction okay and it is it has three part one part is below the duodenum so that is the infradudinal part one part behind the duodenum that is the recto duodenal part another part is above the duodenum that is the supra duodenal part okay so of course it runs along the free border of the border of the lesser omentum okay inclining to the right right to the orta hepatis orta hepatis hepatis of the liver certainly okay so that is the course of the portal vein it has three component we have the infradudinal part or subduodenal part we have the retroduodenal part retroduodenal part okay and we have the and supradudinal part okay infradudinal part retroduodenal part and supraduodenal part okay so this is infradudinal this is behind the first part of duodenum this is the retroduodenum this is above the duodenum this is the supraduodenal part of the of the portal vein okay we got the part of the portal vein so if you look at this figure again this is the this is the splenic vein this is the superior mesenteric vein okay if you draw here this is the superior mesenteric vein mesenteric vein this is the splenic vein and they unite to form the 
portal pane this is the portal pane portal vein and this is the right branch right branch okay right branch and suddenly this is the left branch of the portal this is the head of the pancreas this part is neck our body is not shown here this is the tail of the pancreas and we have the spleen here okay so we got the got the formation of the portal vein and the part of the portal vein so we have two branches of the portal vein we discussed two branches one is the right branch right branch and this branch is larger and wider and it receives the cystic vein okay receives the cystic vein from the gallbladder okay we got the right branch of the of the portal vein we go to the left branch left branch is longer and narrower longer and narrower okay and it receives the para umbilical vein umbilical vein para umbilical vein is going through the flexiform ligament ligament and teres hepatis okay okay so it follows the ligament and teres hepatis and the flexiform ligament okay and this left branch also provide it supplies or we can we can say provide blood provide blood to what to the caudate lobe of the liver caudate lobe of the liver to the quadrate lobe of the liver okay quadrate lobe of the liver and certainly it has it has a branch to go to the quadrate lobe quadrate lobe so it also receives the para umbilical vein okay and it is also connected to the to the ligamentum venosum okay and connected to the ligamentum you can call it ligamentum venosum during embryonic life it was the ductus venosus okay venosum okay we got the left branch right branch okay so we got that now we go to find out the relationships relations okay we'll describe the relation in terms of subdidinal part retrodidinal part and the supradidinal part so first of all let's go to the infradidinal or subdidinal infradudinal okay anteriorly we have the anteriorly we have the neck of the pancreas neck of the pancreas and posteriorly we have the inferior vena cava this is very important inferior vena cava then we'll go to the retroduodenal part retroduodenal retroduodenal okay anteriorly certainly the first part of the duodenum anteriorly anteriorly it is the first part of duodenum common bile duct and the and the and the we have an artery the gastrointestinal artery okay anteriorly we have the duodenum bile duct okay and the gastrointestinal artery okay we 
you got anteriorly. So if you got anteriorly, posteriorly, certainly we should have the inferior vena cava. Posteriorly, it should be the IVC or inferior vena cava. Then we'll go to the supradidinal part. Supradidinal part, what is the relationship? Okay, the supradidinal part. Supraduodenal part, okay, of the portal vein. Again, what is the relationship? Anteriorly, we we'll get the hepatic artery bile duct. Anteriorly, we we'll get hepatic artery and bile duct. Anteriorly hepatic artery and the bile duct within the free margin of the, the lesser omentum, posteriorly inferior vena cava, IVC or inferior vena cava, separated by the epiploic foramen or foramen of Winslow. We got that. So, what is the length of our? portal vein portal vein this is the portal vein from here to here length of portal vein is around 8 cm okay what type of blood it carries it carries nutrition rich oxygen pure blood okay nutrition Rich oxygen or okay blood okay carries blood plus it also carries blood from the from the spleen that that is you know that the spleen is the site of destruction of RBC so it contains okay and the destructed or destructed part of RBC red blood cell from the from the spleen okay. spleen so it is mostly it is nutrition rich oxygen pure it also carries the blood from the splenic vein, spleen is the site of destruction of RBC, so that destructed product will go to the portal vein, to the liver. Okay, we got that. So it is oxygen poor, nutrition rich, rich blood. Okay, we got the length. Now we'll go to the tributaries of the portal vein. Tributaries. Tributaries, we have the left gastric vein, left gastric vein, the left gastric vein also receives some esophageal vein, it is passing along the lesser curvature of the stomach towards the esophagus and it may anastomose with that of the esophageal branches of the Azygos, semi-azygos vein, especially in case of portal hypertension or portal cavern Okay, we have the right gastric vein. 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 Okay, the anastomos. This is the right gastric vein, number two. Okay, so we got the left gastric vein, right gastric vein. Okay, then we'll go. To find out, we have the, we must not forget the splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein, splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein, and secondly, superior pancreatic adrenal vein, superior. Pancre pancreatico duodenal 
duodenal vein and we may add the cystic vein that usually opens into the right branch of the portal vein cystic vein para umbilical vein that is going to the left branch of portal vein para umbilical vein okay we got the tributaries left gastric vein right gastric vein splenic vein superior mesenteric vein para umbilical vein superior pancreatic duodenal vein okay so we got the we got the tributaries right gastric vein also receives the pre pyloric vein pyloric vein and this is related to the pylorus of the stomach so it gives a it gives a clue to the to the surgeon to identify the pylorus of the stomach the pre pyloric vein that opens into the into the right gastric vein okay we got the tributaries now we we'll get some clinical anatomy okay so again if you go to the let us summarize the tributaries again this is the portal vein this is the splenic vein okay this is the splenic vein this is the superior mesenteric vein this is what this is the superior pancreatic duodenal vein this is the cystic vein okay so this is cystic vein cystic vein this is superior pancreatic pancreatic duodenal duodenal vein okay this is what this is the para umbilical vein para umbilical vein okay we got some of the tributaries here this is a left gastric vein right gastric vein this is a site of anastomosis okay we got this is our splenic vein that passes behind the the pancreas okay this is the superior mesenteric vein mesenteric vein we got that again this is a left branch of the portal vein is left lobe of the liver this is going to the caudate lobe okay this is going to the caudate lobe this part is going to the caudate lobe this is the ligament this ligamentum venosum okay this is the ligamentum ligamentum venosum okay. we got that that connects the left branch of portal vein to the inferior vena cava this this tributary is going to the going to the quadrate loop this is going to the quadrate loop okay this is the cystic vein this is the gall bladder is ivc this is the gall bladder gall bladder and this is the cystic vein it opens into the right branch of the portal vein cystic vein okay we got the the portal vein its formation vertebral ladder relation now we we'll go some of the clinical anatomy okay especially we we'll give emphasis on the portal hypertension normally our portal vein should be 5 to 10 is pressure millimeter of mercury 5 to 10 it is if it is more than more than 40 mm of mercury we call it portal hypertension so if it is more than 40 mm of mercury we call it portal hypertension this may happen in case of cirrhosis of liver okay like uh, call the shunt between the the sudden may establish a shunt between the portal vein and 
inferior vena cava it is called orto cava shunt orto cava shunt orto cava shunt okay that is done by the surgeon to to decrease the pressure in the portal system that is one of the important point in case of portal hypertension we have also spinomegaly okay in case of portal hypertension hypertension there there is usually it is associated with splenomegaly splenomegaly so that may need to take out the spleen splenectomy and there the surgeon may communicate the splenic vein to that of the renal vein that is another type of shunting okay so shunt operation but whatever may be done shunt operation because the liver main function is metabolism and detoxification so the absorbed food material plus toxin from the gi tract or chemical like some drug it should go to the liver for detoxification and assimilation if the liver is not functional then if we do the shunt operation we have chance to get the blood urea nitrogen or ammonia product in the blood that may lead to even may lead to hepatic encephalopathy okay that may be fatal in the late stages of the cirrhosis of liver or some type of shunting operation so that's all about the portal vein if you have any question please feel free to ask me please support my channel please subscribe me have a nice day bye now